back with me, Cool Dude Clem, taking a brief break from my video hiatus because, well, got a PM about recording onto tape. So, Mr. Dronism, or however you pronounce it, hopefully this video is going to help you out. So anyway, you asked how to add that tape saturation sound to a drum track using a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and then putting it back onto the computer. So, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So firstly, I've got a drum track open in Audacity on this computer here. And if I just play it... Pretty simple. I'm going to splice that sound into the video so you're not just hearing it out of the laptop speakers. But anyway, to put this onto the reel-to-reel, -reel, you're going to need some way of connecting it up. And what I've got here is a patch cable. We've got headphone socket on one side and phono jacks on the other side. Now, I don't know what connectors your reel-to-reel -reel is going to have, so I'm just going to assume for now that it uses these. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to get the sound from the computer onto the tape. Right, so this is the back of my reel-to-reel, -reel. and as you can see, we've got a couple of phono jacks here, a couple of phono jacks here, we've got DIN sockets, but we'll just pretend that's not there for now, because we're not going to be using it. So with the patch cable, we connect these to the line in, so the red goes into the right, the white goes into the left, and the other end goes into the computer's line out, or headphone socket. So let me just recap, we have the computer's line out, or in this case the computer's headphone socket, connected to the line in on the reel-to-reel. -reel. And the computer's telling me that I've plugged something in, as if I didn't know that. So now we've got the two connected together, we're now almost ready to make a recording onto the reel-to-reel. -reel. Okay, so let's get this set up. Now, firstly, I want to make the recording at three and three quarters inches per second. And to change the speed on this one, use the captain's sleeve, I mean, capstan sleeve. Like this, it's on three and three fourths. Put the captain's sleeve on, that's seven and a half. But for now, we'll just leave that out because we're using three and three fourths. I'm going to set the equalization to three and three fourths because this has a separate equalization switch. Going to set the monitor to source, put the pause on, set it on to record. Next thing to do is set the levels. Now, since I've got the laptop connected to the computer's, I mean the tape recorder's line in, when I start the laptop playing, you can see the meters responding. Of course, not hearing anything because I haven't got anything connected. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Haven't got anything connected to the tape recorder's output, so I would suggest connecting some headphones or an amplifier up to it. And as if by magic, something has appeared in the headphone jack, so I can now monitor the recording. So anyway, I'll just start that drum track playing again. And this is how you set the levels. You want to set it so it's just peaking beyond, I mean below the zero. In this case, for drums, the meters may not be res may not be quick enough to respond to the peaks the drum hits, so it might actually be reading more than it's actually more than you can actually see here. I'm speaking about minus three. That's probably in reality peaking more around zero, which is what we want. Now I can hear the sound coming through the headphones. I don't know if you can. I'll just put one of the headphones on the camera's microphones. I don't know if you can hear that. So anyway, with all that set, we're now ready to make a recording. So I'll release the pause. Start the drum track playing. And away we go. Okay, now the drums are on the tape. Of course, if you want to really oversaturate it, you can turn the levels up really a lot, so it's really oversaturating the tape. But anyway, now what we want to do is get that sound back onto the computer. So this is how you do it. You take your patch cable, 
and plug it into the tape recorder's line out. And then you simply plug the patch cord into the, into the computer's line in. Or in this case on the laptop it's the microphone in, but I've got it configured so it will work with a line level signal. Of course you have to make sure that it's going to play back into the computer. So for this I just need to put the monitor onto tape. So we can now play this into the computer, but first I'm just going to monitor and to make sure how... I'm just going to start monitoring to see how loud the sound is actually going in. I'm playing the tape. And we definitely see something happening. Okay, I think that's my drums right there. So I'm just going to rewind the tape again. Make sure we're at the start. So I'm going to start it recording. Start the tape playing. And now we wait. Okay, well we have a little bit of a problem here. The line level output of this reel-to-reel -reel is far too strong for this laptop's input and it's just... well... just got a lot of weird noise. Not a problem. We definitely got oversaturation, but not the oversaturation we wanted. Okay, so this is attempt two. I've made a patch cable which connects the headphone output of the reel-to-reel -reel into the laptop's microphone input. And also, last time when I was recording, I had stereo mix selected instead of microphone. So, how anything got recorded is a real mystery. But anyway, I've rewound the tape to where the drums start, so I'm just going to start Audacity recording again. And hopefully this time, we'll get something. Yes, we've got something, but it doesn't look like the drums. Unless I've rewound the tape too far, of course. Okay, there we are, there's the drums. So we'll just let that run, and then we'll see how it sounds, or rather, hear how it sounds. Okay, so here we have the drums that I've recorded off the tape, so let's give it a listen. There we are, sounds pretty... I'll just stop that, that was something else that's on the tape. Sounds pretty good, especially considering that was only recording at 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. Okay, now I'm doing something that's probably making the audio files out there cringe. I'm recording it at a much louder level than I really should just deliberately to get that oversaturation. Okay, so we're now transferring that back onto the computer using the methods that I used before. And we'll hear how this sounds. Right, let's hear what we've got. We've got a little bit of a drop out there, but uh, can't do much about that.
So there we go. Anyway, I hope this has cleared up a few things. Anyway, I've got a lot of other things to get on with now, so yeah. See you next time. Goodbye.